are a lot of movies that start well, but then they just come out short of excitement or tension in the second part after a promising start. That's why here today I have compiled a list of 6 movies where the second part of the movie is bad. The first movie I will be talking about is Killers of the Flower Moon, one of the blockbuster movies this year that never quite lives up to the hype. In the beginning, you get a solid introduction into the Osage people as well as an interesting introduction to the characters Ernest Burkhardt and William Hale, played respectively by Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro. You also get a thorough introduction into the plan of getting head rights, and the plan is for Ernest to marry such an Osage woman to gain head rights. The movie really only has those 40 minutes because after that the movie drags out the scenes and there's a lot of investigations into scenes that happened earlier in the movie. And they are dragged out again and again, with Jesse Plemons being the most important character during this second part, as well as Lily Gladstone that may at times seem like too much of an important character than she really is. Yes, she acts well as a sick woman, but you feel the story is mostly about DiCaprio and De Niro, but that is not shown as well in the second part. Violent scenes are also where Dampley and also just done in a brief montage in this movie to make way for the excessive and empty dialogue between the characters. A second movie where I don't feel a second part is as exciting is in a movie from 1992 called Crying Game. This movie is very much known for a role by Jay Davidson as a trans woman that also played Ra a couple of years later in Stargate. The movie starts kind of well and has a lot of tension with a lead character in the beginning of the movie, Jodo, played by Forrest Whitaker, gets kidnapped by IRA. He puts up a hell of an act as this soldier in the first 48 minutes of the movie is really enjoyable to watch as he befriends this Irish man, Fergus, played by Stephen Ray. During those moons, there's an interesting development where those two characters form a friendship and there's a lot of excitement based on whether Jody will be kept alive or not. Sadly, it becomes very obvious that he is not going to make it as we see him showing a picture of a girl to Fergus that obviously has no idea of a real secret. During these moments, the way he acts and talks, there's no real tension on whether he's going to die or not. You just know that's going to be the outcome. Even though he tries to escape and it seems to be a little bit exciting, the second part, however, is a real drag. And although Fergus gets caught up by his past and threatened to do another mission by the girl who lured Jody early in the movie, you never get back the tension you had at the start of the movie. His clear obsession in finding this girl as a way to seek reconciliation with himself is a part of the movie that never really excites you and it is difficult to stay in West the whole way. Of course, it is kind of ironic that she turns out to be a trans woman after Fergus was responsible for the death of Jody, but that's not the core problem with this movie. Another movie where the second part of the movie is bad is one of the movies released this year called Ian Jones and the Dial of Destiny. A clear example of when you milk on a movie series way too much, you finally run out of steam. And this one does not feel like an Indiana Jones movie anymore. The beginning, more precisely, the first 20 minutes has you excited all the way, with Pistol Show and Indy on a real adventure when they are on the run with the Dial of Archimedes from the Nazi character played by Mads Mikkelsen that does a pretty solid role in this one. But that's sadly all this movie has, those 20 minutes, because after that you get an introduction to the ice cold ultra feminist character called Helena Shaw, and she really hijacks the movie. Critical drinker didn't like her either, and I gotta admit, I'm not a fan. Of course, Harrison Ford may be out of shape in this one too, but you feel Helena Shaw does not quite fit this movie, and compared to the rock solid chemistry that Basil and Indy had early in the movie, they have no chemistry. And this is not a well worked movie. It is an insult to the other Indiana Jones movies. I feel this movie is only done to keep the franchise going. And on the basis of that, I think this should be the last Indiana Jones movie. At least, if they make it another one, call it Helena Jones instead. The third, fourth movie I will be talking about today is a movie called Spider-Man. One of those movies with a gigantic potential that never manages to fulfill it. The concept Looks a little like Project Power, but the difference is of course that this drug instead is used to control prisoners in order for them to have an easier regime. The problem with many movies these days is that this one just has a concept and not adequate setup or characters to back it up. The only real good performances here are from Chris Hemsworth and Miles Teller that does a fantastic acting comeback. But you do feel the movie is too emotional, it has a lot of flashbacks, and generally it lacks tension after a decent opening when you were told about the concept in a fulfilling way. The trailer made it seem like a much more tense movie, 
but as time passes, you only get more and more emotion, and you also feel his character listening takes on a way too central part of this movie. I personally believe Miles Teller should have been used a lot more, and you could have backed up this movie with better actors, and not have a movie where you just have two good actors. The next to last movie, where I feel the start is way better than the second part, is a movie from 2016, I saw not too long ago, called Live by Night. It would have had high potential to even be an 8 out of 10, had it held the tension at the beginning, because in the opening minutes you get brutal gangs of crimes, gun shootouts and car chases, and makes for a very tense movie. But in the second part we seem to shift focus to a more emotional drama, where Ben Affleck tries to drag himself out of the gangster scene. And it is all about his life with his newfound lover played by Zoe Saldana. The arc with the casino, which they are trying to build during the second part, is also a very boring one. And although Ellie Fanning does not necessarily act badly, you do feel the characters he plays is very boring and she drags down entertainment in this movie. Generally, you feel after a tough, brutal opening that felt a little like the movie called Legend, you feel the second part is way too emotional and maybe a little reminiscent of a drama movie. But it should be said nonetheless that it is saved by a somewhat riveting ending where Ben Affleck has to show how cruel he really can be. The last movie that provides a talking point for me today will be the movie called The Covenant that has an opening scene. That reminds you of The Revenant where Jake Gyllenhaal is dragged by Dar Salim across the Taliban territory, territory and onto safety. It is really here during the first part of the movie where you are really excited by the tension and action provided by those scenes. When you just make it in time, his face in the movie is made in a very good way, but sadly the second part takes on a way too psychological character and never is anywhere close to match the excitement of the first part. Although someone may feel it is tense that Ahmed gets into Killer's head, for me personally, I feel this part has way too many flashbacks. And it is way too much slowed down when Kinley is back in the States compared to when he is in Afghanistan. Although you get some riveting action by the ending, you are never close to match the tension in the beginning. Well, that was a little rundown of six moves where the second part of the movie is bad. And if you liked it, please drop a comment below.